The Dark Base Pro 900 Wide Edition from Be Quiet is finally here with a modular design for ultimate flexibility, Silent Wings 3 140mm PWM fans, outstanding water cooling support, and so much more. The Wide Edition is available in limited quantities, so catch it before it's gone. You can learn more by clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm assembling my very first Z370 slash Coffee Lake 8th generation test bed. Um, and whether or not you agree with Intel on how they've handled this launch surrounding all that controversy, uh, this platform still needs testing. Today we'll be building with Intel's flagship CPU, the Core i7-8700K, which features six cores and 12 threads. Yes, it is hyper-threaded, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not a quad core, guys. Previously, if you wanted anything more than four cores on a CPU from Intel, you had to opt for their high-end desktop platform. But that is no longer the case as of now, uh, with, uh, with all the competition that uh, Intel's trying to throw uh, AMD's way, um, trying to compete with Ryzen and stuff. So now we've got a six core 12 thread part for about $360 MSRP, I believe. Now, part of the controversy, if you guys aren't aware, um, is that Intel is sort of forcing users to upgrade or use a Z370, a new Z370 motherboard with these 8th gen CPUs, when they're still using the same LGA 1151 socket, and from what we can tell, has the exact same contact layout on the bottom of the CPU. So uh, it sort of begs the question, is Intel just going for a cash grab, forcing users to buy into a new product when they don't really technically have a need to? Intel is claiming that uh, the Z370 chipset brings about some changes to the power delivery that, uh, that takes into account the additional cores and threads on these Coffee Lake CPUs. Um, and so whether or not you agree with that, you guys let me know in the comments below. Always curious to hear your thoughts on this sort of thing. Putting this aside for now though, let's talk about the rest of our all-star lineup of hardware here. Uh, we've got a Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. This is a fantastic looking board. I really love what Gigabyte did here. There's no shortage of RGB LEDs. If you're into that sort of thing, they can be disabled of course as well. Um, there's RGB headers. You'll also find Intel and killer Gigabit Ethernet LAN ports on this thing. Uh, and it, I believe it has three, yes, three M.2 slots for NVMe SSDs. We're gonna be pairing that with a 16 gigabyte kit, two by eight gig sticks of G-Scale Ripjaws 5. This is at 3200 speed and it should uh, work just fine in our system. And we can't forget our power supply. I gotta give a shout out to Be Quiet for providing the PSU and the AIO. Uh, this is the Dark Power Pro 11. 850 watt unit should be plenty of, of power for if we wanted to do some SLI or Crossfire. It's super high quality, very well built. Uh, incredibly quiet too. It's using one of their own Silent Wings fans uh, inside of the unit itself. It's partially modular. I think the only cable stemming from it is uh, the 24 pin ATX, which obviously you're gonna need. Uh, and uh, yeah, all the, all the cables are sleeved in black sleeving. They look incredibly nice. Uh, almost no need for, for cable extensions or anything like that if you're going for aesthetics. Uh, 80 plus platinum certification. And then we've got our Silent Loop 280 millimeter liquid AIO, which uh, I've actually worked with in the past. It was thrown into the, uh, the $2,000 Be Quiet giveaway that I did a couple months back. I'm very happy with the results. I think you can only get this unit in the UK right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but uh, Be Quiet sent it over, of course. Um, it's also using their Pure Wings 2 fans, which are incredibly quiet and perform really well. Uh, so I'll be excited to use that as well today. Before I forget this little guy, we've got a SanDisk SSD Plus. Uh, that is of course a SATA SSD with a 960 gigabyte capacity. Yes, it's a fairly large drive. We only need one of them to store our, uh, our operating system, of course, and all of our games and applications. Only one drive is really needed for a test bed like this. Unless we're testing multiple drives, then I'll add those in as needed, but uh, that should be plenty for our needs for now. And finally, I have my beloved test bed that I've been using for many years now. This is the Lee and Lee PCT60. Um, it does a great job of just making the parts really easy to swap in and out. Uh, there are newer, fancier test beds out there that have come out since I got this guy, um, you know, that support radiators, liquid cooling, that sort of thing. But this is really all I need, especially for this particular test bed. Uh, and I appreciate how it's kind of got a smaller footprint compared to the newer ones that are out now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much our cast of hardware for today. Uh, the build's gonna be pretty straightforward. There's not gonna be much cable management involved because it is an open air test bench. I think I'm ready to start assembling. How about you, Wifey Sauce? Apparently, Wifey Sauce has turned into a camera. I'm terrified.
All right guys, build complete, looking pretty good. The motherboard looks great powered on, I might add. And uh, as you can see here again, the radiator is just sort of floating here. There's no radiator mount on the test bench itself, but I rather like that because I'll be swapping out the cooler from time to time to do different uh, uh, testing with different coolers, obviously. Um, so if anything, this kind of saves me some time. Also, I typically don't put too much thought into cable management for a test bench like this. However, I tried to cinch down all the excess cabling this time around just to keep the cabling contained. Uh, otherwise, it sort of makes the footprint of the overall test bench a lot, a lot bigger and more cumbersome. So it looks pretty nice and tidy for what it is. Uh, and for those of you who are angry or mad or salty that I didn't add a graphics card to this setup, well, that's because the GPU is pretty much the one component that I'll be swapping in and out the most uh, from time to time. So it, it doesn't really uh, make much sense to have a permanent GPU in a test bench like this. Overall, pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, I still have to do a Ryzen test bed and one for Threadripper and one for uh, Skylake X as well. I'm probably not gonna do a video on each of those. Maybe I'll do one video for all three or maybe I'll just tweet some pictures once they're all done. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very excited to start testing Coffee Lake, the eighth generation of uh, core CPUs from Intel is upon us and uh, really looking forward to seeing how it does in this little test bed here. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna close it out. I know this was a quick and very simple video. I'm sorry guys, it wasn't uh, as informative as some of the other stuff I do here, but thank you very much nonetheless for tuning in. Have a good one guys. I will see y'all in the next video.